Welcome, my friends, to a show that you are popularizing. It's called Know the Cause. Throughout this show, we encourage you to inhale. I know you're all sitting there saying, what? Inhale? Scientists have just recently, past few months, discovered that a cancer, lung cancer, can metastasize by inhaling. That's funny. I thought, you know, a biopsy might spread it or it just breaks away and goes somewhere else in the body. Now, mold, we have known forever, metastasizes or grows throughout the body if you're living in a moldy home just by inhaling. I have to wonder if lung cancer isn't lung mold. Do you ever wonder that? Great study in 2013 where these scientists all these diagnosed people with lung cancer. Some smart doctor came into the meeting and said, let's do some further fungal studies. So they did these little biopsies and they found 27 of those diagnosed lung cancer patients had lung fungus. By the way, all 27 were put on antifungal medicines and all 27 survived. How many of those 27 do you think would live through chemotherapy and radiation following an erroneous diagnosis? Look, it happens. Doctors aren't gods. It does happen. They make mistakes. But it's interesting that we know mold metastasizes, causing lung cancer and then growing throughout the body. Why is it they're just now saying cancer also metastasizes simply by inhaling? Think about it. When you think cancer, think mold. Welcome to Know the Cause. My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists. And soon you too will know the cause. <laughs> you know, we get asked the question all the time, uh, Doug, if we're staying with a loved one who's ill, they move into your home maybe for a period of time, uh, how do you help them? You're a caregiver, how do you help them? So I want to go over that. I have some experience with it. My mom passed about five years ago now, and my sisters, my brother and I went, and we really rolled out the carpet for mom, starting with we use spinach and kale, you know, juices like you see here. This happens to be carrot juice with a lot of ginger in it. Oh, that is so good. Let's say that your mom or dad or, you know, aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa, etc., has moved in with you. Hygiene is very important, but let's start at the very beginning. The first thing I need you to do is this. Check with his or her doctor and make sure you can feed them foods like these. You know, for diabetics, they say too much protein can blow the kidneys out. Be careful. Talk with the nurse or the doctor and make certain they're comfortable with things like carrot juice. Believe it or not, many doctors will say, well, that's too high on the glycemic index. Carrot has a lot of sugar in it. Uh, it also has falcarinol in it. So if they have a disease going on, maybe that will help. This one's crucial, guys. Check with the doctor. Uh, in a little bit, Kristen and Kyle are gonna talk here after I'm done with my segment about supplements or, or good other foods you can use, et cetera, herbs. And I want you to know that sometimes those interfere with medication, so do check with your doctor. Then this, <clears throat> make sure they have a proper diet. Of course, I suggest the phase one, phase two diet. Um, but again, I want you to call the doctor and say, look, I'm staying with your patient, my mom, uh, and I want to see to it that she doesn't, okay, you ready? Do some of these things. Over here, we have donuts, and we have peanuts, and we have bread, and peanut butter, and alcohol, and sugar, and melons, and so forth. Maybe that's not the way to go initially. Just a lot of sugar and a lot of grains in these foods. So the optimum diet, I think, for someone very sick is a liquid diet. Maybe they've just had surgery or something like that. Make sure that the liquids, boy, that looks good. Ah, make sure that the liquids are really nourishing them. Lots of vitamins and so forth. Uh, help them with exercise. This is really important. Try and get outside. Uh, outside is always best. The sun does so much good for the body, just burning into the brain, etc. Too much weight or too thin can be an issue. I'm working with someone right now who has lost a lot of weight, so our goal is to help her put some weight back on. This is an individual who's been on antibiotics for a decade. And instead of it causing them to go like this, it's backing them up and going the other way. Balance is the key, right? 
Uh, if they're taking an antibiotic, <clears throat> call the doctor and say, would you mind if I used a probiotic? Many doctors now know what a probiotic is. 10 years ago, they'd have been lost. Today, they understand that there's commensal bacteria and yeast. God put it there when we were born. Uh, when you take a lot of antibiotics, zap, it's gone. And someone in your home has taken a lot of antibiotics if they've been in a hospital. So replace the good commensal bacteria with a good probiotic, okay? But first, check with the doctor. This is, I think, one of the most important. <clears throat> People tend to crave, okay, this is mycology 101, fungus 101. When you have a systemic fungal condition, you crave pasta and bread and alcohol and sugars. You can't get enough for the hot bread in the restaurant and so forth. Be careful with sugar and alcohol, right? Just, just tell him or her you love them very much, but for a period of time, you're going to get your sweets from berries and green apples and things like that on our phase one diet. Is there an obvious yeast or fungal infection? Folks, this is important because then I want you to do this. Talk to his or her doctor about using Diflucan, which is an antifungal for the bloodstream, and Nystatin, which is an antifungal for the gut. You can't prescribe these. These are prescriptions, uh, but the doctor can. So if there's an obvious ringworm all over their body or thrush in their mouth or fungus or yeast somewhere in their body, talk to the doctor about prescribing these. And then finally, make sure your environment your environment that they're now in is free of mold. You go to Home Depot or any of these uh, uh, places and get a little dish for $15 and you can set it out where they're staying in their bedroom or something and see if mold is really growing there. And if it is, you know, make sure you get it remediated. You put in a good air filter. Now, what else is there? Am I free to offer supplements or good herbs, things like Kyle and Kristen know a lot about? Again, check with their doctor and if they say thumbs up, Go for it. We'll be right back to interview them. If you are tired and just out of energy, maybe your filters need cleansing. Did you know when your liver is overtaxed with toxins, up to 80% of your energy generation is diverted to attempt to remove the garbage from your body? You have clogged up filters that can be caused by poor diet, excessive alcohol and drugs, the environment, pesticides, fungi, viruses, and drugs such as acetaminophen. Reduce stress. Don't smoke or drink alcohol and be aware of drug side effects. For detoxing the liver, use the ammunition milk thistle with MG glucan to promote enzyme production that's needed to break down and eliminate toxins, plus removing damaging cellular debris. And the NSC Gold Multiple Vitamin with Vitamin C and K2, plus needed minerals and enzymes. Take the best above the rest, and the best are NSC Ammunition Milk Thistle and the NSC Gold Multiple Vitamin. Which of my books fits you? Are you or a loved one suffering with allergies, arthritis, intestinal problems, or depression? In the Fungus Link One book, the diet is there, the antifungals are there, and so is the information on those disorders. my mom and dad and when I was growing up every time I was sick I would get ice cream and soda pop and all of these things that made me kind of feel good for a little bit but probably exacerbated my problems and the fact of the matter is when we are taking care of sick uh, sick loved ones it's best to try to find stuff that's on this table instead of the ice cream and the soda and the cookies and crackers and everything. And so we thought we'd talk a little bit about what kinds of things are great for the infirmed patient. This is not medical advice. This is just things that we like for that kind of situation. What do you like? Uh, you're, it, it's always a food thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> which, so, is, which is how it ought to be, right? Yes, yes. Yep. Um, basically, you know, the phase one diet is, is perfect. So you... All the, the, the fruits and the vegetables, the berries. We have a little blender or juicer over here. So a lot of times, maybe when you're sick, you don't want to eat kale 
and you don't want to eat uh, <laughs> no, broccoli and things like that. Food. It's not comfort right. food. So you just you have to work with it a little by taking some bone broth. You can make your own bone broth, or you can buy some these days, which is really good. It's going to help the joints. It's going to help the immune system. All those things, and then turn it into a broccoli soup. Mm -hmm. And you can put some kombu in there um, when you're seeping the broth. Or this is um, like a multi-mineral. Uh, it adds all the good minerals. And then your stragulus that's going to help the immune system. So it's so good. The tongue depressor. The tongue depressor, right. yes, yes. Um, so you can do lots of things with the garlic, onion, make your own soups. You can juice things like that. Yeah, uh, Doug made some carrot juice. <clears throat> and what he always does with his carrot juice is puts a little piece of garlic in it maybe nice. some ginger, so it spices it up. It's already sweet, but boy, it can really open you up and plus stimulate the immune system, which is what we want. We don't wanna, whenever we're drinking sugary drinks and eating those sugary snacks, the immune system is gonna take a hit. And that's really what, it, uh, what we're trying to avoid. The thing about everything that you have here is all of this can be turned into like a soup. So if we were talking about bone broth, we were texting each other the other day because I got a big package <laughs> of chicken feet in, <laughs> which you've done on this show. And I'm gonna make some nice chicken bone broth with the chicken feet, all the good cartilage and collagen coming out. And when I take that broth, I can just eat it raw, which is comfort food. If you feel sick, mm -hmm. yeah, a piece of kale is not gonna be very comforting <laughs> no. right here. I'll chew on a tomato. But if we can get some good broth in with all of those immune factors and then turn that into a soup, which what we do a lot of times is put the broth in a blender like this and then we'll put in the kale, the broccoli, the onion, all of these things, the peppers, yes. and really blend that up into turning that into a soup. And if you wanna put some meat in it, you can. It doesn't have to be that way, but I really like to just have it straight into the blender and then you've got all of this goodness that's easy to go down and it feels so good. And it's so easy to digest as well, you know, when you're sick and yeah. you're, you know. And, and if you've done the bone broth with the kombu and the astragalus, you've got those great immune factors in there already combined with all of the things that make bone broth good for you anyway. And I like the way that these things combine. All of these and a whole lot more probably are perfect for your good health with the ones that you care for. Hi, I'm Susie Cohen, author of The 24-Hour Pharmacist, and I only recommend Dr. O'Hara's probiotics. You see, most probiotic products contain billions of freeze-dried bacteria, but that can aggravate bloating and gas. Dr. O'Hara's provides only live, beneficial bacteria, plus their prebiotic nutrition. It supports noticeable digestive comfort. I believe in Dr. O'Hara's consistent results. It takes guts to feel great. Which of my books fits you? The first time I wrote this book, I called it What Makes Bread Rise. Many people didn't get it. The same yeast that makes bread rise can make us rise. So is there a fungal link to weight problems in America? Read the fungus link to weight loss. The diets are there, the prescriptive, the natural antifungals. I think you'll enjoy it, and I think it'll cost you a lot of pounds. If you have knee pain, back pain, muscle pain, or any kind of pain, Flexin is here to help. But you don't have to take my word for it. Here's what this Flexin user has to say. Well, I recommend Flexin because it has worked so well for my wife and I, and we are able to continue our work uh, pain-free as a result of taking this product faithfully. You've seen Flexin on Know the Cause with Doug Kaufman. Now's your chance to take advantage of this great offer. It's buy one, get one free, but you have to call right now. Call 1-800-N-PAIN. Another question I'm asked frequently is, how long do I have to do this diet for? I always reply, it's not a diet, it's a way of life. I do it because I want to stay healthy and because I want to set an example for my children. I do it because I want to move away from the domesticated corporate lifestyle we have been manipulated into towards a lifestyle more consistent with my ancestral evolutionary heritage. I do it because I want to support hard-working local farmers and intrepid wild food foragers. I do it because there is something spiritual about having my hands in the soil and wandering the wilderness. 
I do it because I despair from the loss of skills over the last two generations. I do it because I feel invigorated when I obtain my food from the earth, not a cellophane bag or cardboard box. I'm Dr. Greg Emerson for Know The Cause. Great segment, Dr. Emerson, thank you. Many of us choose to be on the phase one diet forever and ever, amen. Something brand new now on Know The Cause. The fungus factor is a zero, the cool factor is a 10. Midwives and Kristen, she had a baby delivered by Donna Lynn with her help. Now she's having another one. Watch this. Donna Lynn, it's nice to meet you. Very nice to meet Kristen you. Kristen Kahn's yes. is here, how are you? Great, how are you? I'm doing great. This is a treat for me because my wife uh, went through pregnancy with a midwife, but unfortunately had to have emergency surgery after. Uh, so long a time we realized there was placenta previa, but we have a great fondness for midwives in our family. And so awesome. this, and I know you do too, yes, Kristen, yo, right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> is Donna Lynn who worked with you she with is. Emma Jane? She is, yes. And, and uh, little William? William, yes. Is coming. Yes, is coming. All yes. right, <laughs> this is exciting. Uh, let's talk about the difference between doulas and midwives, because a lot of people, I think, feel like this is the exact same thing, but really okay. it isn't. Talk about that, because you are both, or have been both. Right. I started out my training as a doula, and a doula does professional comfort measures for mom. They're trained to help mama be comfortable, and so that includes changing positions, rubbing her back, getting her in water, mm -hmm. telling daddy to where to rub, where to push, you know, how yeah. what's going to make mama feel good. Um, but they are not allowed to do anything medical. Okay. Doulas are not supposed to ever listen to heart tones, do blood pressure, check a cervix, anything like that. So a midwife does all of that and the delivery. Uh, we're trained for everything normal. And so we know very well when something is not normal. And was it normal for you, Kristen, the Absolutely. whole process? Yeah, it really was for the <clears throat> most part. Um, and that's what, I think that's what Donna Lynn does so well, is she educates the mother to know what to do. And so it makes it really easy. Whereas, you know, a lot of times other ways you don't get educated and there can be complications. So, I mean... That's, that's why I felt so at ease. She is such a blessing because, <laughs> and easy to work with because she does nutrition. She knows nutrition, and that's the main thing we teach our How moms. much of a difference does it make? It, all the difference. Most of the diseases that happen at the end of pregnancy, hmm. gestational diabetes, preeclampsia, those complications that occurred in third trimester are directly related to nutrition and how they've eaten the entire pregnancy. That's incredible. So you almost never hear this. This is She was a fabulous client <laughs> and she has been such an asset to us because she not only knows the nutrition but she has shared it with our girls so she te helps me teach. She helps me learn more nice. about what to offer and nutrition is a big deal. We preach it, teach it, lecture it, check it every single appointment. How soon in the process of pregnancy uh, do you begin working with a client? Well, they usually come to us early, like they do the doctor, and let us know that they're expecting. So we get them on supplements, the prenatal what vitamins. Kind? Yeah, okay. And prenatals, fish oil, and vitamin C are the things that I start them on. <laughs> I love this woman. That's a... <laughs> and I want them on those all the way through the pregnancy. Of okay. course, we'll add other things as we go. But uh, that's where we start. And then we have an out-of-hospital orientation class that we try to send them to before their first appointment because it teaches a lot about nutrition, exercise, water intake, uh, the supplements, the things that they need to be doing to keep themselves healthy. Did you find yourself just amening everything that she was saying during the process? Of it was so, yeah, it was so easy. Of course, I had a million questions since it was my first. Right. Um, but I, yeah, I just, I loved that we were just so in sync on every level with the nutrition, spiritually, everything. It was just all just such a wonderful package. Yes. <laughs> and that's And that's part of it. It is the whole package. Yes. You talk about the spiritual side. There's the physical side, there's the spiritual mm -hmm. side. Not everybody is into both of those things, but we 
when you are, what a blessing it is mm -hmm. to finally have somebody who says, we are a whole person. We are body, we are soul, we are spirit. It is good to nourish everything exactly in this whole right. process, right? We only have 30 sec seconds yet, but uh, <laughs> am I on track on absolutely, this one? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely on track. That sounds great. Well, uh, Kristen, you've gone through this one time. Yes. The second time, kind of similar, uh, you know I, what to look I for? I mean, I'm so excited. It's just going to be easy like it was before, and just having already done it, I'm even more at ease, so it's good. This is second a treat. Uh, everybody who's watching is rooting for you and praying for <laughs> you, so this you. is exciting. Thank you, Donna Lynn, for nurturing for her along and for educating yes. us today. Absolutely. We My pleasure. It. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, I'm Carlos Escalante, and I'm here to talk about Paractin by Herbal Ultra a patented extract with published human clinical studies for rheumatoid arthritis. Used for generations in traditional Chinese medicine, Paractin is the secret to defeating harmful proteins in your body, providing relief from discomfort in your back, joints, and much more. Call today to find out how you can get a free bottle of Paractin by Herbal Ultra. Which of my books fit you? Are you or a loved one suffering from mental dysfunctions, hormone problems, autoimmune diseases, or ear, nose, and throat problems? Good news is you'll get educated on all those health problems and you'll have the phase one, phase two diets, and whether or not you might consider prescriptive drugs and what they are, or natural approaches, all in the Fungus Link, volume two. Scientific medicine, yesteryear, today, and tomorrow. What will it look like tomorrow? A good friend of mine, Dr. Jay Mahoney, sat down with me a short time ago, and he expounded on this. Watch. You know, there are very few things I like more than talking with real doctors about where medicine was, where it is, and where they think it's going. Dr. Jay Mahoney's been a friend of mine for many years. Good to see you. you Thanks too. for coming in. I really appreciate it. He's out here locally. He's, uh, what, 30, 40 miles as the crow flies yes. uh, from our office. Um, yesteryear, leeches, bloodletting, um, you know, the Salem witch trials, etc. <laughs> where medicine was, where it is today, and I'm telling you, I think our grandkids are going to look back at this and say, you're not going to believe this, but 50 years ago, doctors gave chemicals to people just to control heartbeats or symptoms and where we're headed. And that's where I think your practice, exceptional medicine, I think that's a future practice. So talk a little about that. Well, in the past, I think, the, I think what happened was that people thought mm -hmm. of medicine as this just um, almost like spiritual, you're not allowed to touch it, it's, it's just mystical. And then all the treatments that, that had been developed were very closely guarded, some of them were unbelievably unsafe and toxic, but now... Mercury. <laughs> yeah, and, but now the patient has Dr. Google. They can consult and they can get out there and they can learn things, so everything's been turned on its head. So this whole um, patient can't have any information, kind of like the church was yeah, before the yeah. Bible was published. Yeah. Um, now the patient has information. So the patient comes to me fully equipped with their consultation from Dr. Google, which I welcome, by the way. Yeah. I think it's awesome because they're my little research team, and they'll bring in this research and consistently come in with, <laughs> thanks to you and, and people like you who are pioneers, they'll say, what about fungus? Mm. And then I'm compelled to respond to that in a way that, that makes sense to them. So I'll say, well, yeah, let's, let's try that out. Um, basically, I honor their question, and I sure. say, okay, that's, that's what I think we should do. So in the future, what I see happening is that patients will interact with technology and with doctors who know how to interact with them with the technology. So there's going to be an opportunity for the patient. They talk about patient-centered care. Yeah. Patients know that if they take something toxic that's going to hurt them, that that's not as good a choice as well, let's do diet, let's do something different. Most doctors who are in practice now haven't been trained in that, right. that model, where they listen to the patient, the patient says to them, how about this doc, how about that? In our practice, we take enough time to have that conversation, and we use technology to get information from the patient, but we work with all that together. And then the patient drives almost all of this stuff, and then I'm the coach who looks back and says, that's not gonna be safe to take you know, that medicine three times a day. Maybe we're gonna go with one time a day, let's see what outcome you get. And then they continually go out and they, they probe the technology, my patients at least, they're, they're very well educated and um, they're, they're very good at educating me, which is amazing because my skills and my knowledge grow logarithmically or however, infinitely, because I let the patient teach me. 
Do you love this? This is so different, folks. <laughs> I, I hear from so many of you that you go to your doctor and you say, you know, I watch this guy on TV, it makes sense. Uh, could I have some diflucan and nice statin? And the first words out of the doctor's mouth are, where'd you graduate from medical school? Mm. I'm the doctor here. I'll decide what you have. Yeah, doc, but you've been handing me antibiotics for two years and it hasn't worked. Do you think we need a different antibiotic or do you think it's a different organism growing inside my body? The questionnaire, you walk into most doctor's offices and you fill out a questionnaire. Have you had appendicitis? Are you depressed? Yada, yada. His questionnaire, I think the basis of your whole practice is filling that out because I think after they fill that out, they say, aha, light bulb goes on. Maybe he's going to be right. Maybe this is a doctor who will finally figure me out based on a questionnaire. Well, and I, I think what you're saying is that when I say to the patient, my number one goal with you is to educate you, then when the person who I'm talking to has a real high level of understanding, it activates their body to do better. So all of the mm. immunologic functions that we're talking about, um, they're all enhanced by having knowledge of what's going on. So we do the questionnaire and it's a gigantic education tool because they'll answer the questions and we'll interpret those questions and tell them, that's what this means. You can look at exactly. this. And then they can go and they can talk with Dr. Google or whoever, whoever else they want to talk with and they can fill in those blanks. Why is it that most physicians graduate from medical school, get that piece of paper laminated behind their desk and that's their stop date? Okay, mm. now I know it, me doctor, MD. And yet there are doctors like Dr. Mahoney who say, that's my start date. I'm going to learn from my patients. Uh, no two are going to be exactly the same. Uh, this is a doctor who is open-minded, who sees probably far too many patients. But thank you for taking the time today and coming in and sit down. He's very, very busy. If you're looking for a doctor, fly into Dallas. If you're looking for a doctor who will help you, Dr. Jay Mahoney has been a friend of mine for many years, and he knows the cause. Good seeing you. Thank, Thank you. you for coming in, you bet. Don't go away, friends. More of Know the Cause right around the corner. Barb and Frank Long of Long Life Unlimited are distributors of one of the best home cleaning degreaser products in the country called Orange TKO with Delimony. Also, they feature many products in the Rafa Remedy line. Try this amazing product on your skin today. They also can serve you with 300 other products, many that are featured on Know the Cause. Ask for the Know the Cause special now by calling the number or logging on to longlifeunlimited.com. Remember, it's God-given, people approved, and doctor recommended. Which of my books fits you? Can you cook your way to wellness? Can You Eat Your Way to Wellness? That's the name of a couple of books I've written, Cooking Your Way to Good Health or Eating Your Way to Good Health. Loaded with recipes, whether you want to follow the Phase 1 diet or the Phase 2 diet. Please your families with good tasting foods all put together in these two great recipe books. What a great job I have, getting to taste things like this every day. Thank you so much, Dr. Jay Mahoney. Doctors of the future will be very much like Dr. Mahoney. Thank you so much, Don Lynn, and thank you, Kristen and Kyle, for your input in today's show. Thank you all for joining us, folks. This, this is the way to enjoy good health. Not all the time, but sometime. Little ginger, little carrot, and away we go.